so we always say believe in the youth trust in the youth you know great sound bites actually we have no choice <laughs> we are a very young nation we have to trust in the youth our job is to create the conditions of victory for them to succeed for them to innovate for them to create value for themselves for the smart ones to create employment for others we have to look at this as a decentralized network of youth that we cannot control we can just enable certain conditions of victory as a nation um bansu we have to do more with less we don't have a choice i see a lot of smart people in this country far smarter than me from journalists to uh, lawmakers to 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 experts and specialists all complaining is because they can't do it well i know that for certain reason you can't get things done how do you work within those constraints to get things done regardless that is the key four organizations fpr nadra state bank sccp each of these does three things and i think our prime minister with some really smart advisors can manage this much right so that's between four that's 12 initiatives you do those you do those 12 initiatives you can save this nation and these are not going to cost money these just need will and the ability to manage some of the fallout right uh, from adjusting resources and human capital if you look you look at pakistan uh, domestically a lot of wealth is created through rent seeking you know you have arrangements with the government you find certain choke points you make sure that the policies or the sros reflect uh, are going your favor and you're able to make money and then you invest it in certain manners and get certain sorts of returns property outside what what have you stock market and so when you do not need to innovate to make money you do not need to know these things so this level of cognizance at the decision maker level was never reached they understand tech is important they'll hire a cio the cio they do the basics which is like you know automation of finance first of all because you know they need you need to know where your money is and how much money you have in hand so you will see erp wave uh, coming from that and then they realize we need other channels so the whole e-commerce boom came and all that um but they will do the bare minimum you know the technology ages come in 10 to 15 year cycles and each cycle they will do the bare minimum because their main driver for profitability comes from a certain rent seeking behavior which this protectionist economy encourages so uh, i guess it comes down to ambition and ambition is not necessarily i have so much money to throw at something ambition is the understanding that I need to invest in real authentic storytelling and that investment will allow me to position myself for my assault on a rent seeking business model. My background is technology and like it's the enterprise technology you know the plumbing of deep enterprise companies and I was lucky enough to work with uh, Cisco Systems which is uh, one of the greatest technology companies in the world and so I worked and I saw deep complex customer problems being solved in a certain manner. And the people who solved them traditional agencies couldn't really understand what they were saying. So that is the gap we tried to fill simply because that's the only thing I knew technology. So I started with a check from one of my uh customers and since then we've grown organically to where we are now. Zero investment, right? and so obviously it's been tough but we have adapted our cost structure always to you know um compensate started very small in the beginning we didn't even have an office we would sit at our biggest client's office so we work backwards from the ambition of uh, target clients and when we see their ambition then we go all in that's been the business model and then if you do good work which we do not compromise on so like by the way we have no office timings we have no hierarchy there's no boss we work in a hierarchy we are oriented around projects so i if i'm on a project i could be reporting to a 24 year old designer for that project right and i would have to listen to her i don't get a say so we don't have any hierarchy we have like there's no even before covid there was no you didn't have to come into the office we were only oriented around customer satisfaction and customer deadlines you cannot screw up on those
so we do two things we do uh, storytelling which is actually a sales acceleration activity usually even in this country even in for fmcg right the the gap between business strategy and marketing exists everywhere so our first thing is figuring out that gap because we're sales acceleration right so i need to figure this gap out i need to make sure the alignment is there this is not like you give me a brief and i'll give you a deliverable we don't work like that we create that alignment and we get everybody on board with that alignment all the major decision maker which is the ceo or in some cases the board after that alignment we create the digital assets what are digital assets social plus web so if you have an existing one we'll revamp it or we'll create it from scratch so we create those social media channels we create the website but the power is in fresh content so the sales team will sit with us every month and say this is in the pipeline this is okay so let's fine tune the content because you seem to be utilities heavy so let's put out a couple of blog posts on utilities and let's make social media a bit more utilities heavy and then on big deals we craft specific uh, sales collateral and that's gone down like really well we've like some of our customers which are local companies have outside the country beaten giants like Accenture and like they came back to us and the, and the customer said yes price was a factor but you guys told a damn good story we were very impressed so essentially uh, that's uh, what we do on the storytelling side the other line of business is experience design which is basically three components to it so we use the same sort of workshop to understand strategy but from there we go into design thinking for defining the problem sometimes as much as then designing the solutions and then from there it goes into user experience and then of course when if you're building products into user interface at the heart of storytelling is authenticity and as our by the end of this year gen z will have the most influence on purchase decisions in terms of net numbers right and this generation is very skeptical they're tired of being lied to they can spot a lie uh, they're savvy so now authenticity has to be done even if you don't want to do it but how do you walk the talk if you have an inauthentic business model to begin with it's exploitative it's rent seeking right from energy to fertilizer to chemicals to cement to automobiles with their oligarchical price fixing so how do you become authentic when you're not authentic so you will see outside the country where economies are more open change happening companies that are creating the greatest value for their shareholders have that authenticity figured out so what they have done is they put wellness at the core of their business models so now instead of having an exploitative business model and money laundering through your csr programs you have both arrows going in the same direction and so they define wellness in a very clear way its impact on our customers impact on the communities we operate in and impact on our employees all of that has to be aligned so you have to have that wellness at the core of your business model now i believe every existing business can do it but it takes a lot of courage and you will not find that courage in closed economies like pakistan um i don't think so i would love to be surprised what happens is we have a certain way of doing things and those decisions you know people sit in these cold uh, conference rooms under white lights you know maybe in a bank maybe in a large uh, uh, corporation and they come up with product ideas and they say let's do this or oh, our com competitor has done this or oh, i saw this being done in luxembourg so that's so there's a certain process of coming up with new revenue streams or how to protect your current revenue streams so what technology allows you to do is put the customer at the center of their conversation right now it isn't right now the end of that conversation is it starts from the boardroom or in that conference room and it ends in some product and service and most of the learning happens after the product is launched or the service is launched when you put the customer at the center the process is changes and most importantly that means that at every touch point you are getting feedback on what the customer is thinking and adapting accordingly only tech allows you to do this but the complement to that is the ability to give people at the front line or at those customer touch points the authority to be able to measure those and you yourself having the governance to get those feedbacks and insights and then translating them quickly into uh, products and services which win when we talk about disruption to me the biggest way to define disruption is how to successfully put the customer at the center so on one hand you have this organization that needs to change but why does it need to change because the customer journeys have become very fluid and very unpredictable the only way to cater to them is to have this internal disruption where you listen at those touch points give power to your people 
and also compensate them innovatively for those insights, right? And that's very hard for us, right? Because we're a very hierarchical, uh, organization-oriented nation, right? As all closed economy nations are. So technology is more about culture than it is about the technology, right? And it's more about your customers' journeys than it is about, you know, how to digi digitize them. And that understanding is at the key of a new business model. I work backwards, not from idealism, but from getting things done. So you have to give people incentives, right? Um, and the best way to do that is to create a reference. Like, if one bank does things in a certain way and is successful, the rest of the banks will adopt. If one conglomerate does certain things which are digital and work for them, the rest of them will adopt. So, uh, my message to uh, uh, the elite is that everything you want from your own business is possible because of technology. And if you don't do it, either the startups will do it for you or another elite with access to capital and disposable income who's sitting on $700 million will do it. So you might as well do it yourself. The best, the smartest business leader always disrupts himself and destroys his own revenue streams before the market or the macroeconomic conditions of the competitors do. So it's a constant process. You have to do both. I think the youth is so savvy that a better age is coming. Um, a lot of inefficiency, we, we keep saying, oh, the inflation is so high, there's a commodity super cycle, all of this, and uh, there's going to be stagflation for the next five, 10 years, whatever. What I'm saying is we have so many inefficiencies internally that are holding billions for us, right? SMB digital enablement will add $10 billion to this economy every year. I can defend this number to the death, I'll sh show you the calculation. So all you have to do is digitize them. And then once you get the data, the amount of business model and efficiencies that people who need, they will come themselves and find the data, find those efficiencies. Because this economy cannot stay the way it is. People are very young, they are coming into their own, they're asking questions, you have to provide them with jobs. Um, the government policies will have to follow that. So common prosperity will become a theme. Current business models are not fully congruent uh, with that. So they will need to change, so start putting in the seeds of those change already. And the hardest problem is always change management. So once you do a few projects internally, you will find that you have the right mindset, you will identify the new heroes and the new champions, and you'll be more ready for the wave when it becomes inevitable. What has helped me is, of course, I take joy from little moments, and I take joy from my commitment to my employees and I take joy from my commitment to my founders of, uh, and, and, and uh, the business decision makers I work with at my clients. And, and I feel at the heart of an entrepreneur managing mental health is to have that authenticity in the business model and that belief that this adds value and that the money will come later. And I think that's the starting step. So if you can create this ecosystem of authenticity, it can dent uh, mental wellness to a degree and, and sometimes you need to know when to go for the kill and sometimes you need to know when to throw the towel in and reinvent yourself, right? So when the mental wellness issues become too large and are not controllable, so you have to be have the self-actualization to make that call. I think Mansoor, if you are lucky enough to have enlightening conversations regularly, right, then I think you can do almost anything and I was lucky that I sought out people uh, and I had conversations with them. And if you look at my life, it is probably a string of these conversations uh, from the time I was young to now, which has illustrated my outlook on life or, or the work I do. So I think I was, I've always been blessed in that manner to surround myself with interesting people.